I don't know how to start this then. Hey, you know how uh, we've been digging through the Airbud franchise mm-hmm, on the podcast? Mm-hmm. So it turns out there's Airbud, there's the Buddies, there's oh. Santa Paws, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But there's more to the Airbud franchise. They had a spin off movie series about American Idol or whatever idol where dogs go on a game show where they sing yes. and then they can become a pop star. We should watch that. And then they can grab a big man in a black and white striped criminal suit and do a suplex on him as a small Jack Russell Terrier. Oh, wait, no, that's... um No, that's a better that's, move. That's that's a different, uh, better that's movie Russell from the same universe. <laughs> yeah, that's Russell Madness. No, we have to watch the really shitty one about uh, the musical. We have to watch the musical. We have to? I, I mean, I lock the door. <laughs> You can't leave. Oh, God damn it. That's how it works. Oh. Welcome to Rough Cuts. <laughs> Dogs, they're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. Unleash. Don't give up on your dream. The superstar within. Okay, so we watched Pup Star, which is the first in a four movie franchise by the Air folks. I willingly had to watch Pup Star from Boix. Yeah, you can I, remove I, the I, ankle I like bracelet your... now, by the way. So, yeah. But I can't, you haven't given me the key. Anyway, um, oh, no, so, but uh, yeah. You, you said I wasn't, you said I wasn't allowed to mention this until the end. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm trying, I'm trying to be quiet here. <laughs> Yes. Uh, pup, so go. there's Pup Star, which is the first movie. Mm-hmm, there's mm-hmm. Pup Star Better the Number Two Together, the sequel. Pup Star World Tour, yes. uh, which I assume is just a more racist version of Pup Star. Duh! <laughs> how, mm, how? I'd like you to explain to me how. No, how. But boy, like, how, how could it be more? <laughs> it has to be. And then there, there's Pup Star Christmas whatever Christmas music. It's Puppy Star. Puppy Please. Star Christmas bullshit. They the changed movie. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. For anybody who hasn't watched a singing competition show, essentially they have contestants come on the show. They sing a song, typically a cover. There's celebrity in huge quotes celebrity oh yeah yeah yeah. they get the d d minus list celebrities <laughs> judges which mm-hmm. then rate the singing and sometimes the audience can vote and then somebody wins and they get a record deal and they make a shitload of money and then they fall into obscurity unless you're like kelly clarkson i have no idea what you're talking about clay eight eight at atkins clay He's atkins diet diets. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, he's yeah. still really famous, right? There's, like, that whole diet where you just, you're supposed to eat only soap or something. And and sometimes their fame lasts long enough where they come back as a judge for the same show to be like, look at this famous person who was on this show five years ago. Yes, when their fame lasts long enough, they go back to yeah. the show. Yes, yeah. when, they're, when they're super famous, they get to go back to the show that made them very famous. Yes. That's when you know your career is on an upward trajectory. <laughs> you know, you go back to your roots All the to way show up. that you're you going up. You haven't peaked yet, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's not a roller coaster where you're on a downward spiral. Yeah, no, no, no. Absolutely yeah. not. You can, yeah. no. What if we did that with dogs? That's as far yeah. as, as the thought has gotten so far, right? Like, let's make yeah, dogs yeah, yeah, yeah. sing. We, we do okay. talking dog movies. Mm-hmm. I'm playing the role of a... Uh, executive at airbud industries in this scenario <laughs> can i play do i get to play the person that's in like the uh oh god the focus group that's <laughs> watching focus this group? i can like uh, give you pointers can either, you can either be the focus group person mm-hmm, or you mm-hmm. can be the chimp in monkey up <laughs> which would you want all right what do i want to role play 
<laughs> Wait, no. No, they've nope. been given... Uh, they've, honestly, they elevated. Monkey up is probably because they uplifted the monkeys so they can talk, right? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the monkey. We, we've seen, like, oh, God, like, all of the air pup stuff. And they, they all talk in those ones. The buddies. In yeah, Bud, all the buddies talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the buddies talk. Inexplicably. They, they can talk to other animals. Animals have animals. Mm -hmm. each. That's just kind of traditional. But the humans very clearly don't understand them. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah. All right. I'm the monkey. You're the executive. Let's. Okay. So where so, are we so, going with this? So let's. So pitch, now that we have this idea, all right, executive, pitch this to me. You're now that we have this idea monkey. to do a a singing competition movie, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna start off with the competition, and we're gonna have some musical numbers just to like lull the kids to sleep immediately, yes. right? And and we'll we'll give them references to stars that they know. Like uh -huh, P. Diddy, uh -huh. that all the kids oh, love P. Yeah, Diddy, yeah, and uh, Bob Marley, yeah. and Bob Marley, yeah, Dog all the kids Marley, love Bob Marley, um, P. Diddy, uh, Lady Papa. Uh, they might like Lady Gaga, but yeah, we'll have to name it Papa for legal reasons. We can't get real Lady Gaga; that would be ridiculous. That'd be like getting Taylor Swift for cats. My fucking right. Yeah. So. <laughs> No Come way on, you get ridiculous. somebody a big star into a terrible <laughs> shit show like that. So, okay, let's do that. And then in the middle of the competition, we have to fill it with ads, right? So, because it's a TV show. Oh, my God. They, yeah. See, I told you that Free V TV was the best way to watch this. You never listened to your executive monkey. But your executive monkey <laughs> told you. Okay, yeah. So we watched so this on Free V TV that has ads in the middle, which the best moment was that in the middle of the, like, show, they ended the a song, show, and then yeah. it cut to commercial. And it had been cutting back and forth between wild garbage yeah, scenes like all of them was like bad cgi yeah. and like fake commercials and stuff and like things like that and then there was dancing bacon you went what the fuck is this why is this and it was an actual ad at this time <laughs> yeah i got bamboozled like, by the Oscar real Meyer ad. bacon or some shit i don't know yeah i like, did nobody this... think of the consequences of Wait. what? Oh no! This idea ah. was. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Oh, okay, this is an ad. Okay, commercial. <laughs> more protection. More sun. You understand my confusion. Neutrogena beach defense. Yeah. I, I didn't. Yes. I didn't expect there to be a commercial. And their families. Okay, but the oh, in-universe ad is even more fucked up. That's the problem, right? So, so now yes. that we pitch this idea, let's do an in-universe ad. We can't just have the dogs talk. We need to. We need to have a reason. So we're gonna give them dog treats called evolution dog biscuits that evolve yeah. the dog's brain uh -huh, so that uh -huh, they become yeah, with you. a more evolved being oh, and they're sentient, okay. and that's why they talk. That's why they can sing. That's why we have a singing competition for yeah. dogs. It's not yep, a cause, cause dogs they're aren't hosting the singing competition. Genetically modified dogs. Oh, okay. That's by cool. giving so them could... evolution dog treats, which are literally drugs. Huh. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. But all right. Perfect. We've solved the problem of how the dogs sing. Okay. On planet Earth, things are always evolving. Humans learn to walk, and man's best friend learned to talk. What? Good boy, want to take a ball? Ruff, ruff, right, right. What? I... What? Evolution dog treats. <laughs> what? Uh... I... No introduction, but that doesn't mean we won't... I see... No issues with this that'll arise in any other way. All right, so we have our tiny yes. dog that's singing, and she sings a song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She, at first, like, we didn't even know, because it doesn't introduce anything. It just starts out in the middle of this competition. Middle like, of the show. Start, yeah. Yeah, it just starts out as the show. And honestly, I was pretty certain, and you thought the same thing, that, like, 
they might just do it as musical numbers and have the show be the movie. That's the laziest like, way to do it, yes. That and was it, my which, thought. Yeah, it's the laziest, <laughs> easiest way to do it, so that's what they'll do. And yeah. that, so they have this dog come up, and all of the judges vote them no. And then this was really amazing because I don't I do not understand the format of American Idol at all. I have no idea if this is accurate to the show or not. They Lady Papa voted no, right? And then a bunch of them, well, or was she the only one that voted so yes? Lady like, Papa all of them, they voted, voted yes. her off. Uh, Dog Gnarly, who is voiced by Bob Marley's son, voted yes. yes. Blake Shelty? Well, didn't he vote no? I thought that one voted, voted yes. Voted and then didn't... Simon Growl, the grumpy Simon Cowell from American Idol, who's a massive dick in character and probably real life, said no. But didn't they say a no enough that she was off? I thought that Dog if, Marley if also voted her off. there's even one no, they're off. Oh, was that it? Because Dog, I thought Dog Marley voted no because he said she needed to like mature and have more influence. Dog Marley said, "You suck and I hate you." Yes, and then slammed oh, the green okay. button. Okay, <laughs> okay, he did. He voted yes after dragging her ass. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Also, canonically, so that people understand, Tiny is not just a small dog. Tiny is also like a pup, like six years old. Yeah kind of thing like Like, it's like voiced by like a Mm -hmm, mm seven-year-old so like dog marley is like hey i hate you you need to mature you suck ass why aren't you an adult already anyways yes (laughs) yep but (laughs) okay but simon growl uh, the grump of the group okay said no and and then lady pawpaw has a golden bone that just says you win anyway fuck you because she's yeah all right so lady gaga is Every judge has a, a veto. I understand that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm starting to get this. So back yeah. in, at the end of the Dog World t- War II, uh, yes. they, when they After they formed, gained sentience from drugs. Yeah, yes. yeah after, they, after they formed the Pup Star World Council, mm-hmm. they gave a, they had a security council that had veto powers, and they gave that to Lady Pawpaw, and she uses that to just override the will of the rest. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. her vote counts more got it so then tiny wins anyway at the same time (laughs) because at the same time there's a bunch of dogs that are sentient that have grown their own being Mm -hmm. yeah and and will and free will watching on tv right Uh, watching the show on tv from dog prison well specifically from the pound a thing that they still have and is legal. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's a, a dog catcher that just abducts sentient dogs and throws them in cages. Yeah. I All right, as your focus group monkey, mm-hmm. I just want to say that yeah. uh, I thought, okay, so we started out, we've got cute dogs. We have a singing okay, yeah. competition. It's kind of mm-hmm. like high school musical. Uh, maybe they can win. You've got lots of cool songs. Uh, you've got celebrity guests mm-hmm. and like fake celebrity guests. The dog slavery thing, though, is really pulling me in. <laughs> Gonna be honest. Yeah, like, I, go, I feel can like we go further with that. Can we just... mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what if we just went really deep on like an underground railroad theme? Yeah. That'd yeah. be great. Like we could just have all of the dogs as they're sentient and being used by human masters. Yeah. They they could just be jailed and killed at whim because humans District are more District 9 cool. was really popular. <sighs> you know? Like what if we took that idea and added it to our pup star movie? And and like also uh, explicitly say that the dog catcher murders them a year after being in the pound. You all thought that we were just <laughs> doing that. I was chained to a desk thing here as a goof. You didn't know it was a callback. <laughs> yeah, so but anyway. Really, can uh, you give me the keys? I want to, I don't want to be in. No. So okay. the District 9 dog singing competition movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, did they not realize the implication <laughs> Did they just not understand? 
They just got to one part of it and they went, yeah, I don't see how this would so do any problems. Anyways, let's just have yeah. the rest of society be the same. But now dogs are sentient. Well, the dogs, I thought the dogs controlled the world. Because, like, the dogs are the leaders of, oh God, of every situation the that they're in, right? Because, like, they're the lead singers of the band. Yeah. They're the, the head of the family. They're the, like, in every social situation... They're the top class. Yeah. And the humans are the lower. Yeah, I mean, we... Because you'd think, like, okay, we have... I say dog slavery, but the things that we enslave them into is they now own... They're all of our celebrities, and they, uh, like, rule all of our arts and stuff. Which yeah. doesn't seem like a terrible fate in a lot of ways. Except for, you know, the ones that are stuck in dog prison ready to be killed? Because no... Humans wanted the. What is with the caste society here? The dog catcher only kills them if their owners slash family. Actually, owner sounds very bad now that I think about it. In this <laughs> universe, <laughs> if their family doesn't pay a ransom to get them back, so it, it's it's kind of like you know when when somebody abducts a prince. They from made another a universe in which Peta then... is right. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I just want to throw it out there. That they, <laughs> they made a universe in which I fully agree with PETA. What the fuck? What the I just, fuck? <laughs> this, what the fuck? I said it over and over throughout the movie. I'm like, you know, I don't want to keep coming back to the dog slavery, but I kind of can't but help but keep does. coming back to the dog slavery. Yeah, the movie does. So, But there's a bunch of different dogs in, in Dog Pound. Yes. Henshi and Dog Pound. There's Charlie... Who is like a an old rough and tough dog? There's I don't know the other dog names, but there there's like annoying dog. There's barbecue dog who really likes barbecue. That yeah, probably won't ever come up. Country western dog. Country yeah. western dog. There's racist depiction of a Sikh dog. <sighs> Which I'm Which really never glad they up. brought that character and theme back from all of the uh, pub buddies. movies. The yeah, buddies. it's basically uh, Buddha. The, the pub. Buddha. Sorry, it's Buddha. Buddha. Sorry, it's different, yeah. It's different. But, oh my God. but anyway, it, it, it's... Yeah. yeah. The last acceptable form of racism. Have somebody keep saying namaste. I, I don't know. I don't know why they're so racist against Sikhs. Other than... Other than that, it's some rich white person who really likes yoga and and doesn't understand and doesn't like, understand well, any fucking thing about the culture, like yoga for religious reasons, and that it's not just a joke. It's just trendy bullshit. I hate they're making it. fun of it like they they're going like, oh, see, Are like they making people fun of it though. That's kind of. I feel like it's set up to be a little bit of the like. Oh, well, like, oh, basic people that do this. Like, it kind of feels like that. I don't know. it Because it feels like it's just something... It, I it, think they're just oblivious. The that, yeah, but, like, that's what I mean, though, is I feel like the way that they write it is that the only understanding they have of namaste and yoga and, like, any of those concepts of, you know, either... Sikh religion or Buddhism or Hinduism, like all kind of, because it's a mismatch, mishmash of all of that, and it feels like their only Correct, exposure yeah. to that has ever been the idea of, you know, like a stereotype of somebody going to their yoga class with a pumpkin spice latte, like that. They think that that's the only people that do that. They don't understand that there's like a whole society and culture around it. No, it's somebody that's been to a yoga class and has seen an Indiana Jones movie. That's as far as they've gone. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Yeah. Like they, it feels like they don't understand that there are people that this isn't a joke. It's a religion and like a culture. <laughs> they don't. They don't get it because it's always yeah. just kind of a butt of a joke where they just. But the joke is just uh, all right. Have them say namaste and then go om because they're meditating. Ha! Yeah. See that'll hilarious that's the joke it's funny laugh. yeah <laughs> funny because they... okay anyway surely the old dog is at the the sentient dog pound mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he's watching the show and bark comes on singing a song yes who is the two-time winner of the show who keeps coming back and winning all the time because the show apparently can have 
the same winner multiple years in a row or whatever. He's not fam- He's become famous enough to have won American Idol multiple times, but not famous enough to not keep to, doing American to Idol. To not keep doing American Idol. <laughs> yes. Correct. And, yeah. and as he's watching it, Charlie says something like, because uh, Bark's like, I'm going to win for the third time in a row. And then Charlie's like, not if I get to you first, Bark. I'm going to fucking snap your neck and shit down your throat. <laughs> like, holy fuck, Charlie. <laughs> he goes full violence immediately. Oh my God. It's kind of amazing. We were like, whoa, okay. <laughs> doesn't like American Idol, I, I guess. Here. What the fuck? I admit I'm no. not a fan, but I generally don't want to murder Clay Aiken. <laughs> Now, Bark will be competing again this year and will have to defeat a talented pool of new contestants in the hopes of becoming first three-time Pup Star Champion. Not if I get to you first. Yeah, so Tiny uh, goes running after a cat that tries to eat a animated bird, which is definitely not real. <laughs> after getting high on drugs and seeing this animated bird. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're eating tainted meat from their no, evolution, no, dog, evolution dog biscuits yeah and and tiny runs out into the street and then gets caught by a dog catcher as his like the girl that is part of his fa- her family her family right yeah, tiny's family tiny's yes, a girl. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, tiny's owner yeah, Tiny's... Oh, I hate that word in this, in this context. In this, in this universe. In this universe, I'm yes. trying to avoid using that word because it's real bad I, allegory. I have no idea something. why there would be any implications <laughs> to raising dogs up to human-level intelligence at all. I see no side effects from this in the slightest. No Keep going. No problem with this. Let's just get the movie going. But she rides her bike into the dog catcher's vehicle. And well, crashes you, and... Into the, you mean the dog catcher runs her the fuck over. <laughs> yeah, because she breaks both her legs and then fixes it by eating ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's just in the yeah. hospital in the next scene. Yeah, and, and at the same time, that's when Tiny gets dog napped by the dog catcher, who brings mm-hmm. Tiny to the dog, sentient dog pound, where Charlie has been digging a tunnel mm-hmm. to escape because it's Charlie's last day at the pound before he gets murdered in cold blood. Yeah, so yep. they spill the Last Supper all over the man because Charlie says fuck the police and, like, attacks Charlie him. Charlie definitely says a cab. It's true. And the yeah. guy leaves. Then they escape. Tiny slips through the bars, but in a way that is physically impossible for that dog to do, but whatever, mm-hmm. don't worry about it. And decides to follow Charlie, leaving behind all the other dogs to a certain death at the yeah. hands of this dog slaver. It's true. They then run from a train, and d- they hitch a ride on it? They hitch a ride on the train, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they jump on. It, like, yeah. Well, it, like, jumping in between trains, too, also. Like, it, it, I was very concerned. I was like, okay, so we've, we flipped the script and we already had the girl get hit by the car instead of the dog. And mm-hmm. now we're going to have the dogs get hit by a train because we have to level it hasn't happened up yet. That would be a new it experience didn't for us. Yeah. It, really looked, it really looked like we were going to get a new experience and have one of the dogs get fucking <laughs> smashed by a train. Yeah, the dog catcher gets approached by the father of the family. Who's yes. like, have you seen my dog, Tiny, a small little Yorkie? It's worth like $10,000 reward. Just asking, you know, throwing money out there just in case because I'm rich. Uh-huh. I have money to spend. Hello? Money? Oh, God. And the dog catcher's I... like, no, but I'll let you know if I find them. Yeah, which is his impetus to go out and catch the dog again. And for there to be plot questions. So in order to track Tiny down, he, he takes the most logical course of mm-hmm. action. He goes to the junkyard, pays the junkyard dog guard uh, three pounds of, of evolution dog treat drugs. Yep. And then gets on his knees and begs Kano from Mortal Kombat in dog form to go hunt down his own kind and bring them back to his slaver cages. To which Kano says, are you, wait, you're offering me money 
to hunt other dogs so that you can use them as your slaves. Okay, let me get this straight. This very mad you Max. Want my help tracking dog I my own kind. You must be even dumber than you look. And he's like, oh shit. <laughs> you big chicken. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Come on, I'm a bounty hunter. It's what Come on, I man, I'm nasty. I'm okay with slavery. What's the price? I love slavers. I just... Yours, God, this Charlie fucking movie, man. Just a little bit, thank you. You know what they say. An eye for an eye. What's the take? 50 bags of evolution dog biscuits. Yeah, it sounds great to me. I'm super down with dog slavery. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Let's get to some murdering and slaving, bro! <laughs> Do you see me? My name's Kano. I've got bling all over me, a black cape, and an eye patch, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you know. I was gonna do it for the drugs alone, but you offered me money? <sighs> oh my god, money and drugs to do slavery? I was gonna do it for fun. <laughs> I don't even. I love Kano. I loved Kano. Honestly, this is like the only good part of this movie. Kano is such I don't ridiculous. Even. Yeah, part. I don't even. Then also, I want to say the family shows up at the dog pound again to go and find the guy. Mm -hmm. And when I say family, so it's a dad, his daughter, mm -hmm. and they're like live in latino the nanny because oh my mm -hmm. god this fucking movie and the you know i'm starting to think this movie might be racist in also some way. that i just want to point out that they have her on screen and she's never allowed to speak she doesn't say a single word in the entire fucking film yep it's, holy shit and they, anyways, they go in there and they're like, oh, Tiny is not in here. Uh, and they're like, oh, but we saw Tiny. Tiny was here and it escaped with this other dog. And because they, the dogs can talk and they're in cages. And, and they're none sentient. of the characters find this a problem. They're all like, oh, oh, so she's gone? All right, well, we'll leave then. See you later. And they go, please don't leave us as slaves. Is it going to leave us to die to this dog slaver? And the dad goes, I well, guess. That's kind of how our society is founded <laughs> that we just have dog slavery and you're just allowed to do this. But my daughter is, doesn't think it's right. So I guess we'll take them. Uh, uh, hired help. Take the dogs into the car. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. This fucking movie. This was in 2016. I need to point Shh. out. Wait, what? <laughs> this, is, this is a newer film. Oh my god. So they take all the oh dogs, and at this point, it's kind of just like the family is one step behind every time where Tiny yeah, and Charlie just... are, and they just go to mm -hmm. different places so that they can have more musical numbers. I, it's I guess it's a road trip movie now. Like, yeah. It's a road trip movie where they go to New Orleans, they go to Nashville, they go to New Jersey, but they're on their way to New York to the Pup Star finale. So are they going to the Nolans? Nolans. So they go to Nolans to, listen to, to talk some jazz. To, to listen to some jazz and to get some, some fucking ribs, some honey glazed oh. ribs. Okay. Some he did talk about his double ribs. smoked honey glazed ribs, though. I want and... those fucking ribs. God, I want those fucking ribs. That sounds so good. And Charlie says, no, I do he not want your no, honey yeah. glazed double smoked ribs. Well, look what the dog done dragged in. Good to see you, Charlie. Y'all hungry? How about some of my ribs? No thanks, Angus. Just looking for big ears. That's the most unrealistic thing that's, that's in this film. That's our hero. <laughs> our hero, ladies and gentlemen, turning down free honey smoked double glazed whatever. Double smoked Whatever. honey glazed ribs? Yeah. Whatever. But the point is, they, they meet these characters along the way that sing yeah. a song. Uh, like Big Ears, the jazz musician. What's her name? Emily Rose, the country musician. Emily Rose, the country musician. Uh, yeah. Shaq from Show Dogs. <laughs> yeah, the, they the meet shaggy the drum dog. circle hippie. Hippie who dog. teaches them the power of drum circle music, except it's just a pop song. I guess. So... Because they didn't, they're like, oh, yeah. we can't actually do drum circle music because drum drum circle music fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, and and along the way, the family is meeting up with people that 
Tiny and uh, Charlie have been talking to. And then mm. they're at the same time adopting off the dogs and yeah. to each person. So like barbecue honey glaze double smoked ribs guy picks up the dog that really loves barbecue. That makes yeah, the, sense. The country western barbecue dog. Country western yeah. barbecue dog. The the jazz the, ones pick up the oh god, what was that one that they picked up? Oh jazz, no, that was no that that was the barbecue dog. Yes, that was the barbecue. And then dog. the country. So then there, what was the other, oh God, I'm trying to remember all these. There was the hippie one that picks up. The, that was the truck, um, tow truck driver that randomly shows up, picks up the annoying Dalmatian because they're both annoying. That's their right. trait. They're fucking annoying. Yeah, they're singing, they're really bad at singing country yep. western songs and they're both very like, y'all, they, you know, we, they talk like Larry the Cable Guy a little bit, but they also yeah. like, hew, 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 as their laugh, so everybody mm -hmm. hates them, and, and they go off together. And then in Nashville, where Country Dog was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there is a country cowboy who is very tall, and he says country things, like, namaste, I like curry, uh, Buddha oh. bless you. So of course the Sikh dog goes with him, I, or cowboy. It's kind of weird that how stereotyped they do all of this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The white cowboy yeah. who at the end is doing a Bollywood yoga. Yeah, no, he has a Sikh turban with like a Sikh turban. Yeah, it's so bad. Yeah, it's oh, he's it, doing yoga. It's one step away from oh. blackface. Like it, it's it, that close. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's real bad. Like it's yep. real bad, but it's funny for how stereotypical it is that it's not like the drum circle hippie that is into yoga and namaste and <laughs> saying namaste. Yeah. And I think he's from Hoboken, New Jersey or something too. Like, yeah, the, the country no music sense. guy is weird because he's wearing no like sense. spurs and a cowboy hat and he talks in like a jersey accent and then he says namaste and then he just does bollywood stuff i don't and then he goes pick up a pumpkin spice latte and i, I yeah i don't no I don't idea what they were thinking about i don't know what the fuck they were thinking with this guy right i mean they didn't think of a lot of things for this because one of the other ones is uh, there's a moment where the kid, God, where where does it happen exactly? The kid is like walking through the park and she's like, I don't know where Tiny went. Tiny could have gone anywhere. And randomly, right. because they had no right. idea how to kick off where for these this family to look for the dog, they just randomly have this dog come up and go, hey, lass, come over here. And it's like, There's no, don't go into the bushes dog. with the talking dog. And the dog, dog just talks to her Scottishly from the bushes who we've never seen him before and we never see him again and he just tells her where the dog is now so well, that they know where to go. He doesn't just tell her where the dog is. He's like, hey, hey, I know where those slavers went. I'm anti-slavery Scottish dog. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> I, I'm part of the resistance. <laughs> <laughs> and then he and arms then her with a And then we just never blood. see them again. Yeah. If your dog's gone missing, or then surely that dog catcher Roland had something to do with it. But why? Are you daft? So he can collect the reward, of course. You'll find her at Happy Ranch. You did not hear it from me, though. Good luck to you, lass. I don't understand. Like, they, they totally drop the ball a few times like that, where they just, oh, shit. They would have no idea how to do things or what to go to next. So, uh... As it turns out, this happened. Like, later on, too. So Kano is hired by Dog Bark. Slaver Man. Well, he's hired by the, the promise... dog catcher. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that was my point, is he's hired by Dog Slaver Man. We see that scene where he gets hired by that guy. And even, this is, oh, God, I even forgot, too. He goes, the Dog Slaver Man, when he's talking to him, he goes, well, what's this dog mean to you, Dog Slaver Man? And he goes... Oh, um, it's just a favor for a 
friend, a friend that I know knows this dog. And so that's why I need it. And I need it unharmed and I'll pay you for it. And they go, okay. And then the very next scene when they're in new Orleans and they're trying to steal the dog, he goes, Whoa, whoa, whoa. remember, be careful with that dog. It's worth $10,000 to me. A thing that he specifically hid from Kano to make sure Kano didn't know so that Kano didn't go for the money. And then the next thing he just says it to Kano because, because, and then yeah, nobody mentions the audience it. didn't need to know that anyway. So like it was so already implied. Well, and like we, we already knew about the $10,000 and Kano was supposed to not know. So I guess that they had a plot at some point where Kano wasn't supposed to know. And it was like a double cross. Him and then or they, just, yeah. they just rewrote it and dropped that scene. And then the, thing is later on about like an hour into the film when it's shown that Kano is competent at least to some extent and our dog slaver man is an incompetent man child you're like okay well why on earth is Kano still working for this douche like it just doesn't make any sense Kano should just dump him and just go after the money himself and right when we're thinking that there's a random call to Kano and Kano goes yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, have you done the job yet? And it's Bark on the other end, who right. we've only seen at the very, very, very beginning. There's never been another scene with Bark for the whole movie other than the start of the competition where Bark is talking, like just singing. And then suddenly Bark is talking to him and he goes, well, I needed you to eliminate her because she might win the competition. And it's like, wait, wait he's hired yeah. by this guy too, I guess? Bark's part of the Italian Why? mob that pays <laughs> bounty hunters to skim the cream dogs to dog mm. slavers so that they uh-huh. don't win competition so that Bart can fix the competition for the mob. See, and in this universe, it's a literal skin the cream dogs. They just skin the dog. Well, it's true. Uh, I just... Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could see Kano probably would be fine with skinning a dog. Kano wouldn't give a shit. He's got a whole big bag of drugs. What does he need any of the, like? Got a bag of drugs. So, yeah, they just out of nowhere pull that as another plot point just because there's a lot of things in this movie that just happened because, wow. Well, I mean, at the know. same time, we find out that Charlie wants revenge again on Bark because Bark stole his song and hired Kano to take him to the dog slavers. Yes, the which same is why situation. he was in a year ago, which is why he's in the dog, which is why he was caught by the dog slaver in the first place. Yeah. Which seems like it would have been important stuff to know from the movie, I don't know, sometime before the last 20 minutes. But who am I? Whatever. Yeah. I'm not I'm not making the big Airbud dollars from Disney. Regardless, Tiny eventually gets to New York and the Pup yes. Star finale. And she's standing outside of the venue. And there's uh-huh. a security dog. Oh, God. And, and she's talking to the security dog, who's a Dober. Mm-hmm. A, a I want to point out, this is a black-coated talk. Because oh, <laughs> it's important. do this in these, yeah. And so, so Tiny goes up to the dog, and the dog's like, uh, you can't enter here, this is a live taping. Oh, I'm Tiny. Oh, cool, where's your golden bone that you're supposed to have, and anybody and, like, to vouch an invitation, for you? Anybody an here? You're... You have a ticket, literally fucking anything. I'll take anything. Give me anything, any proof. And Tiny's like, I'm going to Karen the shit out of you. It's been a long, hard journey, and I am not giving up now. So you best get on that walkie-talkie and talk to someone who can say yes before I unleash a can of puppy woof bugs. Oh, God. She's Karening her way in. I'm going to say. No. Yeah, we have a Yorkie here with serious swagger and a little dog attitude to match. She claims to be Tiny. Tiny? Yes, send her in here now, pronto! All right, tough pup. You're good to go. <laughs> and, I don't and understand. Proceeds... I'm white! <laughs> yeah, it proceeds to white lady carrying up the security officer. Yes. Yeah. Which, what the fuck? First I have of all. A question. Okay, <laughs> I, I, hold up. I'm going back to focus group monkey roleplay here. Yeah, uh, all right, executive go on, yeah. man. Is there a reason why we would want to invite, like, races into our dogs? Human races that we can do. Uh, 
because Namaste and peace and love. Oh, because it's funny. Oh, racist, yeah. racist. We can make good jokes about races if they're dumb. Yeah, because yeah, they're not human, so it's fine. Okay, okay, so it's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah but yeah, we'll yeah. give them sentience. And have uh, them talk, so they can all talk in the accents of the races that they're meant to be depict. Oh, this yeah. Is, I, yeah, this one's great. Okay, never mind. Yeah. No questions. Keep going. Okay, it's not it's not an allegory. It just happens to be. Uh, yeah, no, like no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, okay, we're just going to put our real human races onto these dogs and make them talk like real human people and put them in real human slaver jails and have real human consequences like the death penalty for them. Yeah, but yeah. it's okay because they're dogs. Yeah, well, yeah it's okay because right, they're they're it. District Nine insects. Yeah. Mm, okay. They're not human. They're not real. So. Anyway, so Tiny Karen's her way in. Yes. And Bark is pissed about this because he he hired an assassin to murder her in cold blood, and yet here she is. Got to do everything yourself these days. Fucking a. So so Bart calls Kano, yeah, and is like, "You fucked up. Why are you in Hoboken, New Jersey? You need to come to the show and murder this small dog." She's like six. But, why haven't you murdered this small dog? That, that's yet? why I paid you to do this, and not the dog catcher who paid you to do this. God, this is also. I'm just realizing too <laughs> the implications of like. He asked him to kidnap slash murder and yep. sell or sell into slavery. What is canonically like an eight year old? Correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the point is Charlie got off in Hoboken and wasn't going to go to the Pup Star show because he has PTSD from Pup Star because of Bark trying to murder him in cold blood by selling him to slavers. Yeah. After a bounty yeah. hunter, Kato, you know, grabbed him and, and sold him to the slavers. So he hears about Tiny going on stage and being in trouble, and he's like, oh, we gotta go. So him and Emily Rose, the country star mm -hmm, dog, mm -hmm. jump onto a a train uh, which is carrying radioactive waste to New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have enough of it there. They've got a lot of garbage, but not a lot of radioactive waste. And you've got to even that know, out. I don't know why there was a radioactive barrel in this fucking train, but they made sure to prominently show it. How else do you make evolution dog treats? <laughs> They're just kaiju. Don't worry about it. So whatever, whatever. they hop on the train, they make it to New York, and during Bark's big song finale, mm -hmm. which he's singing the same song that he sung at the beginning of the movie. Which he stole from Charlie, yeah. Which he stole from Charlie. Charlie comes on and starts singing it, and everybody goes, oh my god, how does he also know the lyrics to this song that was nationally televised and sung by this guy like three weeks ago. How could he possibly know? Rather than escorting him off. <laughs> this was after Tiny got dognapped again. And then yes. Charlie uh, saved Tiny. Uh, and confronted Kano and ran past him to get onto stage. And we also learned at the same time that Charlie apparently took Kano's eye with a knife or something. You know what they say, Charlie. An eye for an eye. There was something implied about that, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> what? I need to see the backstory of I, I want to like, see get that David Cro yeah, give it, yeah, get like David Cronenberg in here and let's do like a Eastern Promises style like mob movie with like but, agents. And... But not only did Charlie sing the song and know the lyrics, he sang it better than Bark. <gasps> And, and then Bark's like, get this fucking fraud off my stage. And he's trying uh, to steal my song. And then Emily Rose shows up, just like, no, you're the fraud. See, I have video proof that I could have shown at any time in the last two years when you won singing the exact same song. To save my friend from dog slavery and death. 
But yeah. anyways, now but I'll I chose bring it not up to because it's, it's not now. <laughs> I was okay with dog slavery until this know. very moment. But then somebody said, hey, isn't this dog slavery? And I went, oh shit, am I a dog slaver? Maybe I should stop being a dog slaver. Yeah, I was too busy being very out of touch with the news. <laughs> I... I... So, so Bart gets disqualified and Tiny gets requalified because Tiny got disqualified for missing the show. But then got requalified for showing up because Bark was a fraud or something. I don't fucking care. And and then Tiny wins by singing her own song about love and friendship and whatever. And all the dogs from all over the world that we've seen from the movie all sing along. And, and then Tiny all came back television with for it. an encore of an acoustic cover of WAP. <laughs> Which was loved by all. There's some whores in this house. 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 I said certified freak. Seven days a week. Wet ass pussy make the pull up game. I do need us. I do need a soft acoustic cover. Of that. I know that nobody else will get this unless we put it in because we had this conversation during the movie because there was nothing else to talk about. But I do. I do want. I do want. I do need an acoustic cover of what? And and then yeah, tiny Slow one. Slow and deep. Like and we cut to the we cut to the credits and during the credits we find out that the dog napper slash slaver, Kano. And Bark were all arrested and never seen again, ever, until all of the sequels where they show up again, apparently. Where Kano's in all of them, yeah. Yeah, and Bark, apparently. Is Bark in all of them? Yeah. Oh, shit. I think there's, like, a dog mob thing that happens. I don't know exactly where this series goes, but... Sounds like we're gonna need to find out! (laughs) No. (laughs) What the fuck is this movie? I don't I don't understand the Airbud entertainment like idea. How do you pitch I, this shit? It really goes off the rails from where Airbud started. Cuz like yeah. Airbud in a mo- as a movie, it's just a dog. It's the dog that was trained by a circus performer to do tricks and so that's it, it, why it yeah, can bounce and, a ball back. It's, it's the real Airbud originally, I think or at least it's based off of the real dog. Like, it's just this dog can play basketball. That's it. It can hit a ball into a hoop. That's as far as we got. Well, right? and it's, and the rest of it, like. Well, I mean, Airbud 5 goes off the rails a bit. But... Sure. I'm just saying, but like, dogs don't talk. No. And stuff. Like, animals don't talk they, in the series. They, they don't have a <laughs> sentience that can be understood by humans. You get into Airbud 5, and then like the Air Buddies and stuff, and they start going, like, okay, let's have the dogs start talking, but. The dogs will just talk in animal to other animals, which, like, mm-hmm. okay, a lot of movies do that. And then they just went fucking wild with this one. They just like is this is this the oh. Mad Max of Airbud? Yes, series. Yes, for built the dogs, around, it is built around an American Idol backdrop, where where it's an American Idol battle royale, and you have to win American Idol every year to renew your license of being a pop star. Otherwise you're no longer useful like Bark is because he has to win every year. Otherwise they just throw him in like dog pound or like. There's some other weird implications too, because they, they keep like taunting the dogs in the dog pound with, do you want evolution dog treats? And, and they keep selling them on the black market to these dog gangs where it's implied that if you don't keep taking the drug, you'll lose your consciousness. I was going to say, do you lose sentience? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's implied. I guess. And, and I don't know if they need that in their dog singing competition movie. They they decided to open up. So what they did is, like, some executive went in there yeah, and they what? went like, okay, let's solve a solution. All right, we need a solution for how dogs can sing in a universe with a bunch of humans where humans will actually watch a show of dogs singing and they need Mm -hmm. to sing in human english voices 
And they were like, okay, well, hmm, what can we open up to find an answer for that? Oh, Pandora's box. It's right there in the center of the table. Let's open that and see what's inside. I see like, nothing else for the implications of this. There's there's so many implications. Like, so if if the dogs that are popular get to keep taking the uh-huh. dog drug to be sentient, and then they're selling the dogs that aren't popular and are the poor class as slaves. Like, it's, a cyberpunk this... dy- it's a cyberpunk dystopia, <laughs> yes. It's this like promised Neverland? What is this? There's a like... there's a drug there's a drug that you can take that make that gives you intelligence and sentience. And it's only reserved for the rich. So you have to do like a battle royale style competition in American pop star whatever. And if you don't win, then they take your sentience away and throw you into dog jail and murder you. I don't... This is not the morality questions I was expecting it's, from Pup Star. I just... <laughs> it goes places. What they... The they some executive or writer yeah. decided that there is an answer to how to solve dogs singing, and they never went any further than that, and they just tried to ignore the rest of it. But you really can't ignore the rest of it, is the problem. They made four of these. There's an extended universe of this. I'm gonna need to see it. I'm gonna need to see it. Fucking oh, hell. Man. All right, let's rate Tiny. Tiny is a very Tiny cute, adorable dogs. Yorkie, I guess, and I hate every song that she sings. I, I do hate every sh- song she sings, but also at the end of the movie, she's sitting there on stage and her family runs up to give her hugs and pets, and the Yorkie gets so excited that it goes to pant and forgets how to pant and sticks its tongue out a little bit as a big blep and just Aww. leaves it at hanging out the side I... with its mouth closed, and that's super fucking cute. And there's also a shot in the first scene where it's singing the song and it finishes its song and it runs off the stage excited to its handler and they cut back to it being on the middle of the stage again because obviously the dog was too excited to sit in the middle of the stage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so they just had to leave that in. <laughs> so so what would your rating be? A running off stage out of 10. It's con- constantly excited. I would rate Tiny a, a small stuffed double oh my god yeah 10. okay that too yes um there is there are multiple go ahead, scenes where tiny gets gets grabbed by charlie and then jumps on a truck or a train and it's always a stuffed animal and it looks terrible it's like super obvious and, and tiny like refuses to do those stunts and animal. i respect that mm-hmm. yeah and they did not have the budget for the cg on that no <laughs> no thankfully fuck <laughs> Uh, Charlie. Charlie's an old dog with a heart of gold and probably murdered someone and definitely stabbed Kano in the eye with a knife. Uh, I would I would rate Charlie a doesn't want to be on a singing competition and hates this capitalist nightmare out of 10. Yeah, I'm, I like that about Charlie's character because they say like, oh, you could win pop star and you could become a bit. He's like, I don't want any part of your commercial bullshit. I want revenge. <laughs> I lo- I actually yeah. legitimately really like Charlie. Somebody in there got it. Somebody understood. Charlie's like, I'm not joining this fucking race for sentience that all you other assholes are doing. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, Charlie's yeah. fucking great. Uh, uh, that, I I want to I want to rate uh, Charlie. Yeah. Well, also Charlie, I want to rate as like a Vigo Mortensen out of ten because, mm-hmm. like I said, no, I do fair. really want to see the prequel. David Cronenberg, where he's in a bathhouse and has to gouge Kano's eye out with a knife slowly, because apparently that happened. That had to have happened. Yeah, <laughs> canonically, we it's off screen, but that that's stated. Uh, that that fucking mess is pop star. I don't, I don't understand. I literally don't understand. I. I have very few words for this movie. It's it's not even... Okay, I won't recommend anybody watch this because it's not wild in watching it. It's wild mm-hmm. in thinking about it. Because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all implication. Like, it's all brushed over. Like, when they come in and they're like... They see all the dogs tied up and chained and, like, in their kennels. And then they go, 
hey, give us all the information on where Tiny is. And they go, oh, okay. And they go, all right, see you later. And they go to leave because they're just dogs in a kennel in this universe. Mm -hmm. Like the writers write it as if they're just regular dogs in a kennel. And then somebody in that writing room goes, well, wait, we can't make them leave the dogs there, right? Because aren't they, they talk, yeah. they beg for help. And they go, oh, yeah, okay, well, we'll just have them come along. It's fine. And you're like, I mean, yeah, but also, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's but, like they, none of them realized fully what they were this, implying this is a the movie entire time. That was written by a racist Karen who does yoga and spin, spin in a, they, they did a spin in a circle, vomited uncontrollably, and then wrote this in a fugue state. That's this movie. Maybe they were, maybe it was dogs that were writing this and they were all being withheld their evolution dog treats. They no! were slowly devolving. They were slowly devolving as the movie went along. And I don't like that idea. Thought. I don't. <laughs> it just, I, anyway, so that's it for this week, I guess, or whatever. Thanks for listening to Rough Cuts. Good. Catch us on Twitter at RoughCutsCast. Uh, email us at RoughCutsCast at gmail.com. Appreciate all the support. Check out our Patreon. Uh, it's much appreciated. Any support you, you can give us through there as well. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't like thinking about this movie. I'm just shell-shocked. I'm just staring <laughs> at the ground. I don't, my, my hands have been on my, my head multiple times in the last hour of just... I, Outer this confusion. This movie has production. The CGI for the dogs is generally okay. And there's lots of good voice actors. And I... But why... But why did they think this was... Anyway. See you next uh... time. <laughs>